Welcome to Perennial Meditations, a podcast by the Perennial Leader Project. Here we bring you short reflections inspired by ancient philosophy and spiritual traditions. Each episode is based on timeless principles and practices to help you live your highest good. To learn more, visit perennialleader.com. Welcome back to another episode of our Sundays with Seneca series. Today's selected reading comes from letter 15 on brawn and brains. I hope you enjoy. The old Romans had a custom which survived even into my lifetime. They would add to the opening words of a letter, If you are well, it is well. I also am well. Persons like ourselves would do well to say, If you are studying philosophy, it is well. For this is just what being well means. Without philosophy... The mind is sickly, and the body too. Though it may be very powerful, it is strong only as that of a madman or a lunatic is strong. This then is the sort of health you should primarily cultivate. The other kind of health comes second. Now, There are short and simple exercises which tire the body rapidly and so save our time and time is something of which we ought to keep strict account. But whatever you do, come back soon from body to mind. The mind must be exercised both day and night for it is nourished by moderate labor, and this form of exercise need not be hampered by cold or hot weather or even by old age. Cultivate that good which improves with years. Of course, I do not command you to be always bending over your books and your writing materials. The mind must have a change. But a change of such a kind that is not unnerved, but merely unbent. You see, I have relieved you of no slight bother, and I shall throw in a little complimentary present. Here is the proverb. It's an excellent one. The fool's life is empty of gratitude and full of fears. Its course lies wholly toward the future. Therefore, continually remind yourself, Lucilius, how many ambitions you have attained. When you see many ahead of you, think of how many are behind. If you would thank the gods and be grateful for your past life, fix a limit which you will not even desire to pass, should you have the power. At last, then, away with all these treacherous goods. They look better to those who hope for them than to those who have attained them. If there were anything substantial in them, they would sooner or later satisfy you. As to what the future's uncertain lot has in store, why should I demand of fortune that she give rather than demand of myself that I should not crave? And why should I crave? Shall I heap up my winnings and forget that man's lot is substantial? For what end should I toil? Lo, today 
is the last. If not, it is near the last. Farewell. Thank you for listening. I hope you found something useful. If you're interested in learning more, every Monday we share a short reflection with three timeless ideas to help you start your week with wisdom. You can subscribe at perennialleader.com. Until next time, be wise and be well.